Hey Pokey peeps, today we have the Unova favorite Pokemon of each type. So with that further ado, let's get started. For my favorite grass type Pokemon, I was tossing up between two and that was going to be Ferrothorn or Superior. So I definitely had to go with the Superior on this one. Uh, its ability Contrary really pulled it over the line. I used to use it a lot uh, in a few Contrary teams, giving uh, Victini Contrary. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to play with. Uh, but yeah, so Superior had some good movesets, but it didn't really have much variability. It was pretty much always going to be Leaf Storm, Dragon Pulse, uh, a HP Fire or Glare or something like that. There was really no anything with it. Now onto my favorite fire type of Generation 5 or the Unova region. And if you've seen any of my video, it has to be Darmanitan. This thing's insane. It's such a cool Pokemon. It's so strong. Really quite an epic Pokemon. Uh, chuck on a choice, spec, uh, choice Scarf, that thing's unstoppable. Uh, Flare Blitz kills like 90% of the UU tier, which it's in, in one hit. So yeah, you're going to be out speeding things. <laughs> you're going to be destroying them. You're all good to go with Darmanitan. And for that exact reason, it's going to be on my favorite six of the Unova region. When it came to water type Pokemon of the Unova region, there weren't too many that I really liked, but I did like Seismitoad. I thought it was a cool Pokemon, had some interesting abilities, typing was pretty cool. Uh, yes, it's got that huge weakness to uh, grass, but you can get around that. Its ability Swift Swim made it pretty formidable as well. You could run it with a choice, uh, sorry, a choice band or life orb, something along those lines. Uh, power up punch sometimes and then you could just sort of wreck teams as long as the rain stayed up now that there's the access to dynamax moves if it ever gets brought across you can always go for your own liquidation or max geyser get that rain back up and then you're swiftly swimming through everything nice and easy i have to say i think this is one of the few times where the normal type pokemon is going to be on my top six and that's going to be chinchino I love this Pokemon so much. I would say this is one of the most used Pokemon for me in any sort of low tier Pokemon. I know the strategy is pretty cheap, but having King's Rock and the skill link with like Bullet Punt, uh, Bullet Seed, uh, Tail Slap, and Rock Throw, I think it was, or, or Rock Blast, Rock Blast, uh, was just so much fun. And you could catch people off guard, you could outspeed them. It was strong, it was quick. Yeah, it was a really fun Pokemon to use and made it onto my top six for sure. Now this one's a little bit different because the Pokemon that I'm choosing has two different forms. Obviously it's going to be Thunderous and for me it's the Therain form. Uh, I personally think it looks a little bit better. If it was a purely competitive mindset that I was going with, I would be going with the normal Genie form. However, this one I used so much back in the old days in doubles as well because you just paired it with Landorus, you gave it Discharge and gave Landorus Earthquake and you could just spam things. It was fun. It was it was it was it was a lot of fun. So yeah, Thunderous and I used it that much that I have to put it onto my top six. So there's three in the first four types. I don't know how I've done that, but we got there. Now this Pokemon is one that I think is a little bit underrated and didn't really get enough usage. That is Swoobat. Uh, it has that simple ability. So your Calm Minds are giving you a plus two in special defense and special attack, and you're already super quick. So Swoobat was so fun to use. I don't know why more people didn't use it. Yes, it was frail, but you're also outspeeding most things, and if you had anything set up, you could automatically just rail on people. So, Swoobat, favorite psychic type of the Unova region. I have to say, for the Unova region, I hated the game. I really didn't enjoy playing it at all, and I haven't gone back to play it because I had such a bad experience playing it the first time. Uh, I definitely need to go back and see why I hated it so much, and I'm not sure why it was, uh, but the Pokemon in the game were some of my favorites and most of the Pokemon on this list are actually Pokemon that I really do like and I'm stoked with. Yeah, there are a couple like Swoobat that aren't really the most recognizable Pokemon, but they're still fun nonetheless. For my favorite fighting type, I had to go with Conkeldor. Uh, it's a beast, super strong, super bulky, could take hits, could dish them out. Uh, definitely had to be, definitely had to be on my list here. 
super strong. Its movesets could vary up a little bit. It could take hits really well. And yeah, worked well under Trick Room. Another Pokemon that worked really well under Trick Room and looked cool was Gigalith. Its shiny form is another really flawless one. I really liked it. Made it look like it had gemstones coming out of it. It was, it was pretty sick. Uh, its move pool didn't really have that much going for it, but it was super strong, super bulky. Uh, set up Sandstream, so it was really good in weather teams, which were pretty common a couple of years ago. Now it's more so just sun and rain are the only ones that get that much use. A little bit of sand, but it's usually Tyranitar that's going to be running that. Otherwise, yeah, Gigalith, really super fun Pokemon to use. Now we're onto one of the heavy hitters. This Pokemon I have always loved. I think its design is so cool. Uh, its attack, its speed, all of its stats are great. Its move pull, and then you get the ability Moxie. Whoever thought that, that was a good idea on this Pokemon was a genius, because it is. However, it's so unfair. The amount of teams that you can steamroll with this Pokemon, even if you just get one Moxie boost up, you're going to be taking things out left, right, and center. And particularly if you've left it to late game where you've chipped a lot of Pokemon down, you can just finish them off pretty convincingly with Crocodile. And unless they have that flying type Pokemon on there or Levitator that's going to really throw a span in their work, you just, just go. You just go for gold. Uh, this, along with Diamantan, I'm pretty sure was on every single UU team that I ever made, both with Choice Scarf, because having two Choice Scarf users gave you so much more of a dynamic playstyle, uh, and it really caught people off guard because they'd go, oh, he's got Diamantan, that's going to be the Choice Scarf user, and then they'd send something in slower or expect it to be faster than the Crocodile, but because of the uh, Choice Scarf, it outspeed. So that was a little trick that I used to do and it does end up on my top 6 because it was such an amazing Pokemon. I love it so much. For flying, we take a little trip down to America here with the Bravery Bird, if you don't know what I mean. Check out its shiny, it just goes uh, blue, white and red and it's a little bit blue, white and red at the moment so you can kind of see where I was coming from. But cool Pokemon, its ability Defiant was really cool, made it quite popular in VGC. Uh, its stats in general aren't that amazing, which is why it never really got seen too much by me, or used too much. But it's a still a fun Pokemon, and it's a pretty cool design. Now here we go with another amazing Pokemon. We're going to be going with Volcarona here. Such a cool Pokemon. Having that Quiver Dance made this thing unstoppable. Caught people off guard, particularly back when you could do Hidden Power, and you could get that Hidden Power Rock on there, or something to take out those pesky flying types. It really is an amazing Pokemon, so much fun to use, and its shiny is pretty epic. It did make its way onto my top six because of it being such an incredible Pokemon. Uh, kind of con contemplating making a team up of the six down the bottom because, holy hell, that thing would be unstoppable. I feel like sometimes poison type Pokemon are overlooked, and one in particular that I don't think really got any any sort of respect with Scolopede. Its shiny form is insane. It's bright red with like turquoisey bits on it. It looks super cool. It got the ability Speed Boost, which is just silly. So you could Swords Dance up, get your Speed Boost. It became a really strong, really competitive Pokemon. It didn't have the best coverage, but it still was a pretty cool Pokemon and worked out really well. Now we're onto a Pokemon that I really love and that is going to be Zorark. I think its ability Illusion was one that I played around with the most when I was first starting to play Pokemon. I thought it was insane. I really liked the mind games you could play. A lot of the time I would run it with something along the lines of a Chandelure in the back seat so it would come across as a Chandelure. So they would go for either water type moves or dark type moves which weren't gonna be doing that much to the Zorark and then you could just take it and just run away with it. Also, the progression of Zorark was kind of cool. It turned into more of a physical threat later on in the scene. I personally started off with Nasty Plot. Uh, I didn't like Night Days because it had a chance to miss, and if you've seen any of my videos, you know if there's a chance to miss, it's going to miss in the most crucial of times. So I always just went with uh, Night... No. Dark Pulse, yeah. I always went with Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, and I think I used to have uh, Grass Knot on there as well, just in case. 
and it used to just take things out. It used to just be so formidable, you used to do so much damage uh, and catch people off guard, like I said, uh, with uh, typing. And of course, it did make its way onto my top six for all of those reasons. Such a cool Pokemon. It's shiny, it looks phenomenal. Its regular form looks phenomenal. I think it was actually one of the first Pokemon that I made sure I EV and IV trained perfectly. So yeah, Zoroark, my favorite dark of the Unova region. Now, here's a Pokemon that we spoke about just before. Of course, it's gonna be the Chandelure. If you haven't used it, do it. So much fun to use. It's got a pretty cool shiny form as well. Flames go orange. It looks cool. Uh, super strong. So, so strong. Again, you can catch people off guard using that um, choice scarf. Hit them really, really solidly. Its ability flash fly fire as well makes it really fun in conjunction with other sort of weak to fire Pokemon. Creates a bit of mind games. Uh, and then you've got the flame body as well, which can be a little bit of fun and if you're lucky, you get that little bit of burn and destroy your other team's hope and dreams with it. <laughs> Again, with Ice Type Pokemon, I really am not the biggest fan. I just had to make sure that it was going to be the Galarian uh, Dynamitan because. It, it, it's again, it got that Gorilla Tactics ability and then you chuck a Choice Scarf on it, you've got a Choice Band user with a Choice Scarf Pokemon. Yeah, it, it, it was so silly. It went into Ubers so quickly as well, purely deservedly. Uh, again, you can see why this is my favourite Fire-type Pokemon because it's also my favourite Ice-type Pokemon for the exact same reasons. It just hits like a truck, although it doesn't have the best move pulls. Uh, because the ice type moves it gets aren't 100% accurate, which for me is an absolute no-go because like I said before, if it can miss, it will miss. So I usually stick clear of that and gave it Ice Punch, Flare Blitz, Earthquake and U-Turn or something along those lines, which is, again, just so stupid how strong it was. This has to be one of the hardest favorite Pokemons that I've done because most of these last Pokemon I would perfectly happily have in my top six and not even blink an eye. Uh, we've got Excadrill for favorite steel type Pokemon. If you've never used it in a stand team before, do it. It's incredible, it's so fun. I guess it's a little bit hard now because weather teams are so prevalent, but it is so fun to use, works so, so well, super strong, and again, there's not too much you can do if you've set it up properly. We go into one of the big boys here. It's gonna be Haxorus. Cool design, cool Pokemon, super strong. Uh, if it had a dual typing, I'm sure it would just be that next little bit better. If that was a fighting or a dark type Pokemon, I personally think I'd love it. Yes, it would make it so weak to fairy, but it would be so cool. And I personally think it would be a great Pokemon. All right, guys, and last but certainly not least, and this Pokemon is one that you probably expected to be on my favorites because I talk about it and I use it so much. It's going to be Whimsicott. Unfortunately, it just got nudged out by a few of the others, a little bit more nostalgia with the other Pokemon, whereas this is a more recent love of mine, is the Whimsicott. If you've never used one in VGC or competitive battling before, it, it's game-changing. Uh, with that Prankster ability, being able to get off Tailwind's Fake Tears, uh, Moonblast that destroy things, Energy Balls, it's a, such a cool Pokemon, so strong and you can use it in a number of different ways. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've run it with Tickle before and that was fun. So yeah, definitely a Pokemon that I would consider having on any team. All right guys, so there it is, my favorite Pokemon of the Unova region. A lot of them are so fun to use and I, I would say even though Generation 5 was my least favorite game to play, it had more of my favorite Pokemon than any other game. So, got to give props to them for the design of their Pokemon, or at least the Pokemon that they came out with for the Unova region. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you did enjoy today's video, check out some of my others. I'm sure you'll like them just as much. Anyways, bye.